please, please stop telling me that Jeff Bezos' politics are unknown. Come on. How stupid do they think we are out here? The guy just held a massive event with Obama. The guy endorses every Democrat in the state of Washington. He's a big booster of gay marriage. But the drive-bys are telling us that Jeff Bezos' politics are held close to the vest. That actually, I read someplace uh, yesterday where somebody said Jeff Bezos is a uh, libertarian. Uh, Jeff Bezos of Amazon just bought the Washington Post, and it shocked the drive-by world. I mean, it shocked them everywhere. There was no leak on this, which means the Obama administration was not involved. There was not one leak. Bob Woodward didn't know about this before it happened. I mean, not one Washington Post journalist was able to ferret out that their newspaper was on the market. Folks, the mainstream media is, for all intents and purposes, dead. The, the dead tree Mainstream media is dead. All of the all the, all the actors are moving to social media. That's where um, they're all headed. Uh, it's it's just a matter of time. Even Bezos, I think, said twenty years the Washington Post will not actually be published as a as a as a paper. It's all going digital. Anyway, greetings. It's great to have you here, Rush Limbaugh, the EIB Network, and the Limbaugh Institute for Advanced Conservative Studies. Telephone number, if you want to be on the program, 800-282-2882. The email address, ilrushbo at eibnet.com. We'll get into the Bezos Washington Post thing and what it means in mere moments. But there is a, a, yeah, it is a somewhat shocking report that I came across today at a website run by Doug Ross. It's called a conservative report. And he maintains, Doug Ross maintains here, that Valerie Jarrett gave the orders to stand down in Benghazi. To all the Valerie Jarrett, who constitutionally is not in the chain of command and cannot do that. And that's why this, if true, is a bombshell. Valerie Jarrett nixed the raid on bin Laden three separate times, remember. And the adults had to come in and basically act on the intel that they had as to where bin Laden was. It was Valerie Jarrett who put off three separate times an attack to either capture or kill bin Laden. It was Panetta and Hillary, and some others, apparently, who just finally uh, overruled her and started the operation. They pulled Obama off the golf course for the photo op after the event had already uh, begun. But, But Doug Ross is saying here, confidential sources close to his report have confirmed that Valerie Jarrett was the key decision maker for the regime the night of the Benghazi terrorist attack on 9-11-2012. Here's the chronology. At 5 p.m. Washington time, reports came in through secure channels that Benghazi was under attack. Leon Panetta was the Secretary of Defense. Martin Dempsey was the Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff. They they summoned Obama, and they briefed him on the crisis face-to-face. Now, remember, this is the meeting where Obama is reported to have said to both, well, actually all three, Panetta, Martin Dempsey, the uh, chairman of Joint Chiefs, and Hillary. You guys do what you have to do. And he vanishes. This is the best intel that we've got. And the story for the longest time, where was Obama? Because he was off the grid for the next seven hours. Nobody knew where he was. And remember, throughout all of this, We're all asking, who issued the order to stand down? Because that can only come from the top. I don't know how many times that I I made the statement on this program, the Secretary of Defense cannot order people to stand down. The Secretary of Defense cannot order, on the other hand, forces from, say, Italy 
to enter the theater and engage. That has to come via the chain of command. That has to come from the top. And the top in this case is Obama, not an aide. So if this is true, this really, really is a a bombshell. So at 5 o'clock, Washington time, on the day of the Benghazi attack, the Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, and the Chairman of the Chief Joints of Staff, said that on purpose, Martin Dempsey, summoned the President and briefed him face-to-face. Subsequent to that brief meeting, Obama went to the White House to dine in the residence. After supper, Obama had a phone conversation scheduled with Benjamin Netanyahu. And as that meeting drew to a close, Valerie Jarrett, who is the assistant to the president for public engagement and intergovernmental affairs, went from the living quarters to the White House Situation Room where the attack in Benghazi was being monitored by Panetta and Dempsey and other top-ranking officials. Now, it's not known whether she was instructed by Obama to go there or if she went of her own volition. It is only known by her and Obama if she went there on her own or if she was told to go there. A critical question that needed to be answered and the sole military order that could have launched offensive actions neutralizing the terrorist attack on the mission and its subsequent attacks on the adjacent CIA annex was the issuance of cross-border authority, an order that can only be issued by the commander-in-chief. And cross-border authority was denied. First, it was reported that an Army Special Forces team was present. With a, with a C-130 on the tarmac at Tripoli, and it was, it was ready to go. It was equipped with weapons that sync with laser designators, like those that Woods, Doherty, and Ubin had on that. Remember now, one of the things that always intrigued or puzzled me, these four guys... Well, these three guys plus the ambassador, they were ordered to stand down and they went anyway. And I think it was Woods who was painting the enemy location with a laser because he thought that there was aircraft in the sky that was going to aim laser-guided bombs at the target that he was painting. That didn't happen because there was no C-130 up there. There was no air support. They were on their own. The order to stand down had been given. But they went anyway. It was their instinct, their sense of duty. So what Woods ended up doing was giving up his own location rather than painting an enemy location for a laser-guided bomb to come from that C-130. Now, had that C-130 been on station over the CIA annex in Benghazi moments before the mortar rounds were fired, instead of awaiting further instructions, the entire outcome of this fiasco would have been different. But somebody gave the stand-down order, and this this website, Doug Ross's website, is claiming that Valerie Jarrett did it. And so the question that is unanswered, did Obama tell her? Here's, here's what's amazing about this. Leon Panetta is no slouch, folks. Leon Panetta knows the Washington game. He knows the Constitution. He's a liberal Democrat. He was chief of staff for Clinton. To survive the Clintons, you have to be a number of things. You have to be an excellent suck-up. But you also have to be a force of your own to stand up to it. And he did, and he pulled it. But he's no slouch is the point. In the normal, everyday flow of events, he's not going to accept an order. The Secretary of Defense is not going to accept an order from a domestic advisor to the president. That's not how things happen. That's not the chain of command, particularly in a circumstance like this, where the necessary order to be given could only come from the commander-in-chief. So we don't know. This website's asserting that Valerie Jarrett gave the order and that, and that, and that Panetta and everybody abided by it. Stand down, they stood down. They didn't do anything. So the question is, did they simply, one of two things, think that Valerie Jarrett was speaking for Obama, 
Remember, he's off the grid by now. Or was she on her own, exercising her own authority? Remember all the stories that we've had about the number of really powerful women in the Obama inner circle that have a lot of autonomy and do call a lot of shots. And Valerie Jarrett is one such person in this administration, imminently trusted by Obama, and is... uh, a, a genuine Alinsky, roll-up-the-sleeves, community organizer acolyte. I mean, she is Obama. This is, this is one of these people that would not have to be given an order by Obama to know what he wanted. And in fact, it may be that Valerie Jarrett often tells Obama what it is he wants. No, no, I, that may sound funny, and I'm not even going into feminist male-females. I'm just telling the structure of this place and the, and the value that Obama has placed on Valerie Jarrett and the power that she has. It was Valerie Jarrett, again, that pretty much has been documented three times prevented the bin Laden operation. She's, it, she's extremely powerful. Panetta would know this. The chairman of Joint Chiefs would, uh, would know this. There was also a, a team of Green Berets on the ground to secure and or evacuate the annex, the CIA annex. And the outcome would have been two SEALs still alive and a mess of dead terrorists if they had been given the order to engage. But they weren't. They were all told to stand down. Now, Doug Ross writes that the second and most troubling aspect of the refusal to issue cross-border authority is who issued it. Rather than the president, the commander-in-chief, making critical decisions, granting or denying the authority to initiate offensive actions, the decision not to take action was made by a person. The people did not elect, nor did the Congress have confirmation power over The military order not to initiate action, saving our men in Benghazi, was issued by the president's advisor, Valerie Jarrett. And this is what they're trying to say is a phony scandal. Now, if this is true, it would certainly explain, ladies and gentlemen, all of the serial lies and the cover-ups and the obfuscation and all of the efforts that were made to distract people's attention from this. Somebody had to give the order, and Obama was off the grid. That has always, to me, been one of the most interesting aspects of Benghazi. Five o'clock he tells Panetta and whoever else, when we were originally told that Hillary was Secretary of State, she was there too, and it, 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 you, you guys handle it, I'm off. And there's been a bunch of speculation. Maybe he's playing basketball, shooting hoops, who knows? Putting green. But I mean, people were trying to find out where he was. He's off the grid for five to seven hours. And yet somebody issued the order to stand down. And as I say, Doug Ross here is uh, making the case that it was Valerie Jarrett. Now, this is by no means mainstream news yet, folks. There, are, I mean, the number of people who know about Alex Rodriguez compared to this is like a factor of a thousand to one, maybe ten thousand.